if your plants are growing slow, weak, or not packing on the frost, this might be the one thing you're missing. Come on, let's get into it. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A. Plus, see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, come on, High C. When we're talking about performance, what is my, what do I always say? What do I always repeat? Lights. <laughs> Nutrients. No, environment. <laughs> environment <laughs> is everything. And one of the biggest aspects of environment is VPD. And it sounds intimidating. It is not. It's called vapor pressure deficit. It is the weight of the water, or I'm sorry, of the air and the humidity. So as the air and the water, the more water the air holds, the heavier it gets, the more it's going to weigh down on your leaf. So just like when it's really humid outside, mm. it's harder for us to perform. Uh, when it's not humid at all, when it's really dry, our skin cracks and all that. It's very similar with the plant. The plant has uh, reactions for that as well. So the plant needs a good balance of the humidity. And you were telling me that different temperatures of air actually hold different amounts of water. Yeah, definitely. When I think of I'm from Florida, don't tell anybody, <laughs> but it's hot there and it's hot and humid. That hot air can hold a lot of moisture uh, here in Colorado when it's cool. Uh, the air just doesn't have the capacity to hold that moisture anymore. So that's why you know, VPD is the relationship between temperature and humidity. Really simply just getting the temperature and humidity right. Okay, and specifically for plants, why is it so important? Because the plants have to breathe. You've got those, you know, we have pores, plants have stomata. We talked about how the plant sucks up water and goes. it makes that pressure, basically, or it's that pressure deficit mm. that allows the water to get sucked up and, and out the stomata. That's where your hydrogen and your oxygen and uh, that's where all the components to build plant material come from. They come from the water. And you were telling me that it can cause like a traffic jam if your VPD isn't working properly, yeah. the water's not flowing through. Help me understand that. The stomata, just like we have pores that can open and close, the stomata is trying to regulate the amount of water that the plant is losing mm -hmm. in relation. So it's taking into account the atmosphere. Uh, so if there is way too much water, you know, way too much moisture in the atmosphere, the plant can't off gas. It can't do anything. The weight of the water in the air is equivalent or greater uh, to the pressure that the water is releasing through the stomata. So you get no action there. So you get, don't forget the water fuels all the growth. You need the hydrogen from the water to mix with the carbon and grow the plant. So it's like uh, if there's no exit in the stomatas, Yep. You get this traffic jam, and then there's no way for more water to be pulled up yep. through the roots. Yep, and they, it confuses them, and they close. And same thing with if it's too dry. If it's too dry, the plant's like, I can't hold on to this moisture. Every time, I, I, I can't keep up. I'm pumping moisture up. The, I'm pumping uh, water up the vascular system, and it just keeps going right out into this 20% humidity, 15% humidity we're probably in here, you know? Uh, so, again, the stomata close. No water flows up. You know, it stops that water from flowing up, and it stops, you know, plant synthesis, photosynthesis from happening. Yeah, with photosynthesis, if the leaves are dry, then it can't photosynthesize well, right? Mm -hmm. So if the air's dry, the leaves are dry, you're not going to get the photosynthesis if it's too moist, though, and that traffic jam effect happens where water's not being pulled up, what are the negative side effects of that? Well, now the plant can't breathe, and it's super humid right at that leaf, you know, right where the surface of the leaf, man, molds, mildews, other, you know, other than slow growth. What happens? Nature attacks the weak, right? Yeah. Actually, I want to pull back, though. Slow yeah. growth. You did tell me that having too much humidity would slow the growth down. Sure. Why? Yeah, I mean, think about it. If those stomata are closed and it's not sucking up water anymore, it can't build itself. It can't get the hydrogen to combine with the carbon. It can't pull the nitrogen and the magnesium that to make that chlorophyll molecule. 
all that is, you know, it's, it's happening aggressively. And if you slow that down or theoretically even stop it and close those stomata, and you're stopping all that plant building action, all that photosynthesis. And we talk about nature attacking the weak. All of a sudden you've got this unhealthy or out of balance plant fungi, you know, just pathogens in general will come and attack it then. Okay. Last point on this. And I know we're going to do a deep dive sure. in a future video, but not just plant material. Also the things we're looking for, like trichomes, those are also needing that carbon in that water, right? Your secondary metabolites, we'll call them, but your terpenes, your cannabinoids, all those things, your flavonoids and thiols and all those things that contribute to that entourage effect, to making that medicine, to making those strains unique. They're all just different combinations or very similar combinations, just different shapes of hydrogen and carbon. And I keep on saying it, where's the hydrogen come from? We know the carbon comes from the air, from the CO2. The hydrogen comes from H2O, comes from the water. So you have to, if you want to synthesize, whether it's plant material, which is also hydrogen and carbon, or terpenes and cannabinoids, you have to have a steady, steady supply of both of those. And you get the hydrogen from water just flowing up and out the plant. All right, so it sounds like this is a real key factor. Getting this balanced correctly is really what everything else is built on. Yeah, I mean, if you can't breathe, you know, think, you know, I'm just using a human and I'm anthropomorphizing, uh -huh. but if you can't breathe, you're gonna worry about eating, you know, you're gonna worry about packing on muscle, you're gonna worry about breathing. Right, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about how we get our VPD sure. dialed in. And there's charts out there. Yep. They kind of show, but you said that the way it ranges, you want to get your temperature and then you want to match your humidity. Humidity, yeah. Okay. I mean, think about it. So temperature, uh, I'm thinking clones, okay? What do we know about clones? You keep them kind of warm so that the, the, it's a little bit of heat for the roots to heat up. Uh, you want aggressive photosynthesis, so it's warm and humid. Same thing when I'm in Florida, right? <laughs> Hot and humid. Not so hot that you can't keep moisture in the plant, but hot and humid. So, I don't know, one of my high 70s and high, 70, high 70s temperatures, you know, maybe 77, 78 degrees, and then high 70s in humidity. I'm probably in the 70%, 80% range when my clones come out. Shoot, what am I at in the clone dome, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm really, this is, I can oversimplify this as saying you start from more humid. And then as you progress through your flowering period, you go less humid. And it's just very similar to spring and fall and summer. Right. You know, during summer, you got hot, humid. And then as your flowers develop and you go theoretically into fall or into bloom, your humidity is lowering. And it's kind of counterintuitive, but your VPD goes up as your humidity lowers. So you'll see that on the charts, it's the deficit. It's a bigger deficit. It's a deficit. Yeah. Okay. So it has an inverse relationship. Okay. It just means as your plants are developing, and this is, you know, intuitive, I guess, is you're going to really worry about getting molds and mildews, right? When you mm -hmm. got some big fat flower, you don't want 70% humidity. So you start with clones at 70% humidity. By the time you're in, in, in veg, you're in the 60s. Then you're going down and you're just slowly dialing, dialing your humidity down, probably dialing your temperatures down as well as you get further on into flower because you don't want the hot temperatures to volatize those terpenes off. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of intuitive. Lower temperatures and a uh, little bit lower humidity. By the time you're done late flowering, you'll have gone from 70% humidity and cloning to probably 35% humidity when you harvest. Those are best practices. And how do I control that? Uh, dehumidifier, either a dehumidifier if you're doing a sealed room or if you're someplace with lower humidity like I'm at, just exhausting the humid air, letting fresh air pull through the cracks of your grow or through the intake of your tent. That's a real inexpensive way to do it. A dehumidifier is essentially a, an air conditioner, has a compressor, takes a lot of amperage to run, uh, makes heat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just consider that if you can. If you're not running a sealed room and you can exhaust, that's a really easy way to keep your humidity in check.
and temperatures. And it used to be a pain in the butt to keep your temperature and humidity in check. And I do love AC Infinity. They came out with this 69 controller, Model 69 controller. And it does. It, it monitors temperature, humidity. It'll turn your fans or whatever equipment dehumidifier on. Uh, it even has a daytime and nighttime setting if you want to change it in date. It's, it's really cool. So something like that. I don't think they're very expensive. Uh, but get yourself a monitor controller like that, and you'll be able to dial in your environment for perfect VPD. And that is how I keep my VPD dialed in and crushing it. But what about you? What temperature and humidity you keep your plants at? Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share this one with another grower you know. And check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending. I think you'll dig them.